What's up guys, Houndish here, and we're back with a big old Destiny 2 news update. And we do have some new stuff to talk about today. So firstly, Traveller's Chosen is here, we've had the evacuation quest, we'll touch on that, and a couple of secrets which remain. But primarily in this video, we have a lot of new information for Festival of the Lost 2020. It strongly teases the return of Varix in some form later this year, as well as the Stranger and a couple of other characters. We have a new encrypted cash loot system, with new quests, secret ascendant items, and exotics to cover. Oh yeah, there's pretty insane armor ornaments coming as well. But we also have some Beyond Light stuff to round up in the video, and then a few other updates. So a rating really does help me out below, guys. But now let's get into it. And the very first thing that we're going to talk about following on from the update just yesterday would be a bunch of new Festival of the Lost items that are in the game. So we're taking a look at these on Light GG right here. And a really interesting one to point out would be the Varix mask. And we can see just as he looked in Destiny 1, he'll have a mask to celebrate Festival this year. But it's pretty interesting because we speculated at the possibility of more Varix story, a potential return of the character. And that was based on the Deluxe Edition ghost lore that suggested Varix had been spotted with a group of fallen VIPs on Europa. And the one thing to say with Festival of the Lost characters that they're focused on masks for, it tends to indicate that that character is a key focus in the game around that period of time. So I think it adds weight to the theory that Varix is going to be featured once again in Beyond Light. Let us know any of your thoughts about that, but also we can see that we've got an Exo Stranger mask, as well as a Spider mask, a Wrapped Traveler mask, and then even a Spider's Associate mask, which is pretty cool. Another key focus for Festival tends to be the armor and cosmetic rewards, and so Jinsa shared an image right here showing the new armor ornaments for Festival this year. And as we can see, these are pretty insane. So the Warlock on the left-hand side has got some very vampiric looking robes going on. And so the Warlock gets the Blood Lineage set. Hunters get the Canis Luna set. And we can see there's kind of a silver demon wolf thing going on right there. But then we have the Chemflesh set for the Titan, with this effect of the kind of outer layer of the armor sort of burning away like skin or something. Suddenly, some very interesting armor sets right there for this year. But according to the database, these are going to be found via Eververse. And then we have some interesting new items. Firstly, the Ascendant Lens, a focusing lens from the Dreaming City through which the Ascendant Plane can sometimes be seen. This is an item we get from a quest at the Spider, so perhaps something that we can use inside of the Haunted Forest mode or somewhere else in the game to acquire some rewards. And potentially we're going to get some secret Ascendant Plane areas alongside that. And then also inside of the Haunted Forest, we're now going to have encrypted caches that can drop a bunch of the different items from the festival. And we can see from the item Cypher Decoder that they are a single-use algorithmic codebreaker, which are essentially able to open those encrypted caches at the end of the Haunted Forest. So almost like solstice keys and packages or something like that. And then we also may have found Bungie's mummified rewards. So we've got three exotics, the Rap Speed Ship, the Tomb Raider Sparrow, and the Restless Shell. And all three of these items we can see have got that kind of mummified, wrapped up effect. But the source is Festival of the Lost 2020, so it doesn't look like these are Eververse items, but will actually be in-game drops during the event. And so that's a bit of the stuff that we know about Festival of the Lost for this year. Definitely looking pretty interesting, so give us your thoughts down below. Moving on to a few more interesting Destiny things though. Firstly, Jinza tweeted following the update yesterday, I don't know when, but apparently the Nightfall Double Rewards bug had some kind of positive impact. And there's a new activity listing in the database, Double Ordeal Rewards. Enter Nightfall the Ordeal playlists this week and claim victory to earn Double Rewards, and then Double Rewards boost will be active until the next weekly reset. And so it's looking like at some point during this season, probably a bit later on, we are going to get the opportunity to actually earn Double Rewards inside of the Ordeals. I think that totally sounds like a positive thing, and I think a lot of players have been asking for something similar, this could potentially be the redacted bonus that Bungie spoke about having during the remainder of this season. And so let us know what you think about that, could be pretty interesting. But for Beyond Light, players have spoken about the fact that a recent Xbox Series X trailer showed a little bit of new footage. So initially, instead of characters inside of this gameplay having class icons on them, we can see the Guardian on screen is showing level 31. So could be that that base level cap is coming back and being extended in Beyond Light. But of course, it's not a confirmed change because this could be just a test build that's showing something different. But also players have pointed out we've got an abstract Hydra there. So potentially a slightly new form of Vex on Europa as well. There was a little bit of curiosity about the amount of strikes that we'll be seeing at the launch of Beyond Light and how many are on Europa specifically. And Cosmo confirmed this is a full list of strikes that will be available for free to all players on November 10th. And it confirms Europa will have one new strike at launch. So the Arms Dealer, Lake of Shadows, Inverted Spire, Exodus Crash, 
Inside Terminus, Warden of Nothing, Hallowed Lair, Broodhold, The Corrupted, Scarlet Keep, Will of Crota, and of course that one's coming back on the Cosmodrome, and then the redacted Europa Strike. In addition to this though, Destiny's Devil's Lair and Fallen Saber will be coming out of the vault during Year 4. So just a quick reminder on what to expect from Strikes at launch in Beyond Light. Personally, I'm very curious to see what they do with the rewards and things like that. Hopefully, anything new is going to have Strike-specific loot. And going back to Grandmasters that we just spoke about, players were curious that we had all of them available a couple of weeks ago, but now it's just gone back to one. And so DMG said he's checked with the team, and Strike Selection will return closer to the end of the season. This is intended to be a form of catch-up for players who miss out on a week or two of GMs. And as we extended this season, it's been pushed back to the end of October. And so we will see all of those strikes unlock, but we're going to have to wait a little while. Of course, yesterday, Bungie did post in more depth a few details about the Hunter Revenant subclass that we'll be seeing from Stasis in November. So they show off Silence and Squall channeling Stasis shards towards them, Revenants form Karma Blades and use them to unleash a lethal two-pronged attack. And so with Deadly Edge, upon impact, the first blade shatters and sends out a wave of stasis energy that freezes any enemies in the surrounding area. And then you have Stasis Storm, the second blade hits and creates a violent stasis storm that hones in on nearby enemies, slowing, damaging, and eventually freezing them. So Hunters are looking pretty cool right there, but she said that as is the case with the Warlock Shadebinder and Titan Behemoth, players using the Hunter Revenant will also be able to customize their powers over time using aspects and fragment slots. An example for the Hunter is a Hunter-specific slow dodge aspect that will allow Revenant to temporarily slow nearby enemies each time they perform a dodge. I can imagine some nasty builds popping up with that one. But in terms of a quick stasis aspect preview, we've got Shadow Drive, and you activate one midair to quickly descend and shatter nearby targets on impact. But also, Whisper of Hedrons gain a bonus to weapon damage after freezing a target with stasis, which comes with a penalty of minus 10 to strength. And so give us your thoughts about that one down below. But Bungie finished by saying, apart from intrinsic stasis abilities that will be part of each subclass, all Guardian classes using stasis will have their choice of a variety of stasis grenades to use in combat. So the Glacier Grenade, upon contact with the ground, a wall of stasis crystals instantly burst from the earth, and nearby enemies are frozen inside stasis crystals. And of course, we've seen that plenty in the trailer. These grenades have multiple uses, from encasing enemies to create cover, and then when destroyed, the crystals will create AoE burst damage to nearby enemies. And then there is the Cold Snap Grenade. Upon impact with the ground or an enemy, this grenade unleashes a wave of stasis energy that races along the ground in the direction of the closest nearby enemy, freezing them, and then searching out the next nearby foe. You can freeze up to three enemies with a single Cold Snap Grenade. But finally, there is the Dusk Field Grenade, and these create powerful stasis fields that suck enemies into them when forming, and once an enemy is caught inside, they'll be slowed, and if unable to make it out in time, frozen in place. And so it's cool to get a bit of info about those grenades as well, definitely. They're going to be a pretty big part of those subclasses, so once again, let us know any of your thoughts on any of those subclasses that we've learned about in the comment section. Finally, a couple of extra patch notes for the update that we had in the game yesterday. And for exotics, and the Ruinous Effigy specifically, Transmutation Spheres can no longer be picked up by players with an active super ability. And perks that provide ability energy on super activation, such as Apotheosis Veil and Radiant Largesse, they will now activate after super energy is consumed. These perks used to activate during the super's warm-up, but that allowed players to cancel their super during warm-up to gain ability energy without consuming super energy. And this change will prevent players activating those perks for free. Certainly an interesting one there. But then they fixed a problem where players who completed Tommy's Matchbook Catalyst Pursuit were re-awarded it. A problem where the Trials Vendor Engram was advertising rewards at zero power level. And then Eater of Worlds and Spire of Stars Prestige Ornaments can now be viewed in collections. They also fixed a bug with the Become Legend step in the new Light Quest, incorrectly asking players to reach power level 950 when they should be reaching 1000. And then we've got the change to Redrick's Broadsword in collections, the Sleeper Nodes on Mars, the Spider's Weekly Bounties, and a couple of other minor fixes. And so for today, guys, that is everything that we have to speak about in this video. Let us know your thoughts on any of that new festival stuff. The armor's definitely looking pretty cool. And that tease for Varix, I think, is really interesting. As we spoke about the other day, we also had a tease for Prince Aldrin, with his icon appearing on the Cosmodrome Destination node in Triumphs. And so he's quite possibly going to be a vendor or character associated with that destination. 
But of course, across the entire year, seasonal content, the different kind of activities we're going to see, and all of the story, it now looks very likely that Variks will fit in there as well somewhere. So that's pretty cool. But also there are those new exotic rewards for the festival event itself coming next month and beyond light updates. So give us any of your thoughts about those. But if you have enjoyed the video, a rating below really does help me out on the channel, guys. And if you're new around here, be sure to get subscribed and turn on notifications so I can keep you posted on the world of Destiny 2. But otherwise, for now, whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.